I would take from the continuity side of things, and I know that I know there's 30 practices involved in continuity of care, so it's about letting you know what they're doing, is think continuity of care because it's safer and effective on the evidence that we have. Um, and I put a, a, a picture of a seatbelt there because um, I'm thinking of clunk, click every trip, think about continuity um, when you have every consultation. And the question I'm going to pose, which will feed into future discussions when I hope you have meetings about the outcomes locally of your continuity projects, is do you provide continuity for episodes of illness or and chronic conditions? Or do you provide some sort of overarching continuity with the usual doctor? And I've talked about usual doctor. You might have a personal list, but it's unlikely. Or you might have buddies, or you might have micro teams that care for those subgroups of patients. And the outcome from the continuity of care project that you've been involved in locally are some conclusions such as we need to tailor the approach to practices to introduce continuity, and you need to measure it, and you need to review it and see the impact. So we have lost some continuity of care during COVID, but we've also gained from continuity to look after patients.